Hey y'all, it's Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, and I'm getting ready to move my orchids from my apartment here to my friend Jean's uh, greenhouse, which is currently empty of orchids. So she's gonna take care of my plants over the winter, which is really nice of her, um, while I move into my new house. So I will have moved the day before this, this uh, video was posted, but I'm actually filming it the weekend before. So this is that, that Halloween weekend right now. I will be uh, moving these plants into probably a much better area. Uh, I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you that this is all deep shade right now. So I've got a bunch of light loving plants that haven't had really any sunshine for a couple of months. And they're, um, they're, they're, they're doing okay. They're, they're still alive, which, which is the important part. Uh, so getting them over to Jean's house this winter will hopefully kickstart um, their photosynthesis ability a little bit. So I've noticed that the, the Cattleyas are, are getting pretty skinny and there's really no reason. They're getting plenty of water and enough fertilizer to, to do well, but they're not getting sunlight, right? And sunlight is a really critically important key to growing orchids successfully, especially ones that love a lot of light. So what I'll do is I'll turn the camera around and and show you a little bit of what I'm dealing with, and then I will film some more at Jean's place to show you what it looks like uh, once everything's all set up. So uh, let me turn the camera around real quick. All right, so I've gone through and I sprayed with imidacloprid for the second time in a couple weeks, which is um, a really good, a really good pesticide for spider mites. And those, those little jerks are my biggest pest right now. Uh, this is as bright as it gets in the yard. You can see I get a little tiny bit of morning sunshine over there and that's it. Everything else is in deep, deep shade. And I have got lots and lots of skinny bulbs on Cattleyas that used to have gigantic fat bulbs. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna take all of these plants over and drop them off at Jean's house. I've got this Ancelia africana blooming out of season for some reason. I, I It wasn't imported, so I'm not sure. Uh, it may have just been actually stressed so much from the lack of light that um, it decided to bloom. Uh, these, of course, are my plants under lights. I'm gonna bring this setup with me and keep some of the more sensitive plants with me in my house. Uh, but this group of plants here will all go over to Jean's place and whatever's left over there will come with me to the new house and grow probably in the in the grow tent. And I'm not sure where I'm going to put the grow tent. I want it to be kind of a nice situation. So uh, the grow tent is not particularly attractive. Uh, the reason that those those catacetums over there are lying down is I'm I'm tipping over the, the well so that they dry out. We had a, a really nice thunderstorm yesterday. So everything is super wet, but uh, these guys are still very green and I want them to start hardening off. So I'm gonna give them drier periods between watering. Uh, these ones still need to be tipped over, of course, and I'm gonna let the, the water dry out, but essentially the water well, you know, holds water up to the, the, the dots there. And for those of you who don't know, catacetums basically don't wanna dry out at all during the growing season. And you can see that this promotes massive healthy growth uh, in terms of the roots. The leaves are not where I'd like them to be. You can see a lot of spider mite damage there. And, um, and hopefully that is something that goes away one of the other things over here is these are the certipodiums. These normally grow in full sun. You can see some very unhealthy dropping of leaves here after the thunderstorm. I'm hoping that this is just damage from the thunderstorm. Uh, basically not enough sunlight made for weak plants and then the, the wind came and blew them over. So uh, hopefully that's all that is and not something more serious. This is, this is my punk totem. I also have pods hanging on my St. Ledgerianums. I'm curious to see what happens with the lack of sunlight for these guys. 
And the leaf blower in the background tells me it's probably time to wrap this up anyway. So what I'll do is I'll show you what this looks like when I get it set up at Gene's house. And then when I get this set up at my new house, this will be probably what I'm going to be filming about for the next couple months uh, until the spring when I can get everything back outside in spring for us here in Texas where it's warm enough to get the orchids back outside is early April. Anyway. All right, y'all, so I've moved most of my orchids into my friend's greenhouse, who was kind enough to let me take up space. She's got a lot of space and said, hey, bring your plants down, and boy, is that an absolute lifesaver. So, <clears throat> so these are basically my smaller Cattleyas, and they are wonderfully spaced out. You know, I... <laughs> I've spent my whole life growing basically everything next to everything else. So having this much space is really cool. I've got some of the, some of the catasetums that are still growing. I've got them down here. Uh, you can see spider mites came back. I nuked them with Bayer 3-in-1 twice now, so that should be good. Uh, and then all my podiums are up here. Large Cattleyas all down here. I'm sure you can hear the fans going on in the background. There's one up there. And there's one behind me. I'm gonna slowly turn this way without making anyone sick. I got my real small Cattleya seedlings down here. Uh, Walkeriana from my friend Susan here and then the other one up here I think both of those have bloom spikes on them right now <clears throat> and then Jean's collection what's left of is she's got uh, a lot of it or all of it over here but she's got a bunch of Walkerianas that are spiking oops up here and uh, some spikes here, some buds down here, and some actual blooms. Look at this one. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely stunning. Two blooms, very fragrant. Cerulea Walkeriana, also fragrant. This is one of the uh, awarded ones. I forget the name. Oh, Manhattan, Manhattan Blue. And then this, the Semi Alba has a couple more buds coming. And then there's some, I think this is a Nobilior up here. And, and some more up there. So some, some really cool stuff. Uh, my my catasetums, I'm going to cut the leaves off tonight and then bring that over in a big batch and then I'm done. In fact, I'm going to have you follow me along real quick as I cut the leaves off the catasetums. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is actually cut the leaves off these catasetums. I haven't done this in a couple of years because I really haven't needed to, but... Um, it's just so much easier to deal with them. And, you know, some of them are probably not where I'd want them to be in terms of their bulb maturity before I cut the leaves off like this one. You know, this is probably another month before uh, I would prefer to cut the leaves off. Something like this, which, well, it's ravaged by spider mites. Um, but these are, are in a much better condition to cut the leaves off. And, you know, uh, there are lots of people out there who think that you shouldn't cut the leaves. I have cut them off for many, many years and then stopped doing so because I had the space to keep the leaves on when I had a greenhouse and didn't have to bring them inside into my house. So I just let the leaves on and let them fall off naturally. That's probably preferable, but whatever. Um, 
your catacetums, if you cut your leaves off, will be just fine. And the great thing about plants is they grow back, right? So what I'm gonna do is I have one job left. Actually, no, that's not true. I have two jobs left. I'm gonna finish this glass of wine and then, or bubbly, I should say, and then I'm gonna cut off these leaves. And through the power of television and magic and YouTube, everything is completed. The leaves are all chopped off and they really just are so much easier to deal with.